So we're going to demonstrate how SPSS can help us understand and score questionnaires. So we're going to use a data set that we have here that has several questions included in it. And you'll notice that one set of questions is HTQ and there are 16 of them. Another set of questions is HFS. There's actually 18 of those. And another set of questions is MLQ questions. And there's 10 of those. So it turns out that there's really just three scales or three questionnaires that have been given here, a 16, an 18, and a 10 item scale. So we're going to start with this MLQ. The MLQ stands for the Meaning in Life Questionnaire. Now, based on some other documentation, I know that the ninth item in the MLQ needs to be reverse coded. That means that these ones should actually be flipped around to indicate sevens because this was measured on a one to seven scale. And you can see if we do that, that's going to uh, fit the pattern across this person's responses. Sixes, fives, sixes, fives, one, that needs to be flipped around to be a seven because the wording of that item was just reversed. It was backwards of what the scale actually measures. So to do that, we're going to come up here to transform and we're going to say recode into different variables. So we'll come down here and we'll grab that MLQ9 variable and slide it in over here. We're going to convert it to something called M LQ9, and then I just add an R for recoded, click change, and that will indicate that it's going to recode that variable. I got to tell it how to do so. So I say an original value of 1 should be recoded to a value of 7. Add that recode. A 2 should be a 6. Add that one. A 3 should be a 4. Up oh, rather, a 5. A 4 should remain a 4. A 5 should now be a 3. A 6 should now be a 2. And a 7 should now be a 1. I'll check this by looking at it. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 should be recorded to 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'll click continue and now I'll say OK. In my output window it just lists the commands that it just executed. In my data set I can now see way over at the right hand side that there's now an MLQR variable. Well that's good because now I'd like to take all 10 of those appropriately coded MLQ items, I'm going to do a simple reliability analysis on them. I'm going to come down here, I'm going to say I want all 10 of these MLQ items, but then the ninth one I know is incorrect, so I'm going to kick it back out, go down here, and grab the correct MLQ9, which is MLQ9R. Come up here to the statistics button. I'm going to check these three options, which will provide me with some nice output, and I'll say OK. Now what we see here is that the Cronebox Alpha is 0.747, and we're hoping that it's going to be at least 0.7 or greater. There are 10 items, that's correct. It gives me the mean and standard deviation for each item. Down here, there are means and scale variances if the items are deleted and any item that would cr create a great change in either of these things would be an item that we would want to be careful about removing. In this column we have the corrected item total correlation which gives us a sense of how tightly the individual item connects to the total score and you can see here that many of these items are in the order of the 0.6 or so but we do have one here that's very low and this item, if this weren't an established scale, this is the, the ninth item that we just recoded, in fact. Um, if this weren't an established scale, we'd probably consider getting rid of that item. 
overall we have a very nice alpha and so what we're going to do is we're going to compute a total score and we'll call it meaning total and we're going to compute an average of these 10 items. So I will say MLQ1 being careful to indicate it's MLQ9R Got to make sure I have commas between each of the variable names as well, and I say OK. Now again, I'll come down here, look at my data, and find that now I have a meaning total score included in my data set.